A number of once common diseases are now rarely seen by physicians in the U.S. The following true story illustrates one of these cases. A previously healthy two-and-a-half-year-old boy was brought into his pediatrician's office by his mother after she noted he was limping. She reported that over the past six weeks, his ability to bear weight on his right leg had progressively worsened. There was no history of trauma, but he had a slight cough and his mother thought that he felt warm. His mother also noted that he had a speech delay and described him as a picky eater. In the office, a plain radiograph of the right leg showed a possible fibular fracture for which an orthopedic surgeon recommended repeat imaging after a period of inactivity. A child who is unable to bear his own weight is worrisome. Other than trauma, possible causes include infectious, malignant, inflammatory, and neuromuscular conditions. Four weeks later, he began having signs of pain in the left leg and started crawling instead of walking. His mother also noticed that his gums were swollen and bled easily. In conjunction with his painful leg, the new gingival findings increase concern for cancer, specifically leukemia. Leukemia can cause overgrowth of the gums and low platelets, predisposing patients to bleeding. The bleeding gums could also be due to low platelet count from another cause or bleeding disorder. His mother brought him to the emergency department of a local hospital. There, he was agitated, with evidence of pain in both legs. Due to concern for non-accidental trauma, causing his presentation, Child Protective Services was called. A CT scan of his legs was performed, which did not show a fracture. Laboratory studies revealed a low hemoglobin level, low mean corpuscular volume, and low percent transferrin saturation. A peripheral blood smear showed red blood cells that were smaller and paler than normal. Non-accidental trauma is a consideration in a case like this, where the child's unable to walk and has a possible fracture. Child Protective Services should be contacted when this is suspected. His low hemoglobin level and the smaller size of his red blood cells may be caused by iron deficiency or lead poisoning, or it may indicate anemia due to chronic disease. Iron deficiency anemia in toddlers is often due to consuming too much cow's milk or a limited intake of foods rich in iron. The anemia together with the leg weakness is especially concerning for hematologic malignancy or other cancer leading to infiltration of the bone marrow and compression of the spinal cord. Inflammation of the muscles, myositis, or spinal cord, myelitis, is also possible. Additional imaging will be helpful. MRI of the head and spine was normal. Given concerns that the leg weakness might be caused by Guillain-Barre syndrome, a neurologic disease in which the body's immune system attacks the peripheral nervous system, a lumbar puncture was performed. The results showed normal numbers of white blood cells, glucose, and protein levels in the spinal fluid, ruling out this syndrome as a cause of symptoms. Following these tests, a rash developed in the patient. He was then transferred to another pediatric hospital for further evaluation. There is no evidence of inflammation of the spinal cord, though muscle inflammation remains possible. Finally, lower extremity paralysis can also follow tick bite in some cases. We'll continue on to the second hospitalization to learn more. On presentation to the second hospital, he had scattered pinpoint-sized spots of bleeding under the skin, and the gum swelling was noted again. He kept his legs in a frog-legged position, and pain and swelling were evident in both legs. His muscle tone was decreased in both arms and legs, and his patellar reflexes were brisk. Hyperreflexia raises concern for a spinal cord disorder. However, with the findings of the rash and gum changes, there is unlikely to be a unifying neurologic disorder that explains the patient's symptoms. We should broaden the differential diagnosis, and serologic studies should be sent to test for rheumatologic conditions associated with blood vessel inflammation and for nutritional deficiencies. Inflammatory markers and muscle enzyme test results for muscle inflammation were normal, as were levels of vitamins D and B12. Heavy metal screening was negative. Blood samples were sent to an outside facility to measure vitamins A, B1, B2, B3, B6, C, and E. The radiographs and CT scans of the legs obtained at the prior hospital were evaluated again by pediatric radiologists, and lucent metaphyseal bands in the femur were noted. Lucent metaphyseal bands can be seen in a normal growing child, but are also seen in children with leukemia or nutritional deficiencies. A bone marrow biopsy performed to rule out cancer was normal. Electromyelography and muscle biopsy results were also normal. MRI of both legs showed periosteal elevation. 
The periosteal elevation and MRI is nonspecific but can be seen in severe nutritional deficiencies. A diet lacking vitamin C can cause scurvy, a disease which impairs collagen production and compromises blood vessel integrity. This can then lead to bleeding of the gums, bone pain, and neurologic abnormalities. We should revisit the patient's history. Additional history was obtained and revealed that the patient's diet consisted largely of chocolate milk and graham crackers. A review of the nutritional labels revealed that these foods are lacking in vitamin C. Additionally, his vitamin C level returned very low, at less than 0.1 milligrams per deciliter. The patient was started on supplemental ascorbic acid at a dose of 100 milligrams, given orally, three times per day. Over the next week, he began moving his legs again and his gum symptoms improved. Since his speech delay and eating habits raised the possibility of autism spectrum disorder, he was referred to a behavioral specialist for further evaluation. At a four-month follow-up visit, his hemoglobin had returned to a normal level, and he was walking again. Scurvy is now rarely seen in developed nations, and so their diagnosis is often delayed, as seen in this case. It's important for clinicians to consider this diagnosis in populations who are particularly susceptible, including those with restrictive eating habits, such as older adults, patients in psychiatric facilities, and individuals with autism spectrum disorder. It was only after a comprehensive, invasive, and costly workup that this child was found to have an easily treatable disease, simply due to a diet lacking in vitamin C, something that might have been discovered sooner with a more detailed history. Modern science has given us numerous tools to diagnose complicated diseases, but it's important to remember that sometimes the most effective tool is asking the right questions.